Hello, welcome to Sharp Angles Podcast. I am Dan Zuda, joined here by Ryan Crystal. There's quite a few quarterbacks I like, but I did sort of feel like there's a number one that I wanted to get. And so I'm going to take Patrick Sertan. Okay. I was a huge fan of him coming out of the draft, really encouraged by what he did as a rookie. Uh, just to throw a couple numbers out on what I was really encouraged by is his production downfield. I mean, he was targeted a lot, which is yeah. obviously very common for rookie cornerbacks. Teams want to test them early. And I think based on what he showed, we're probably going to see a, a drop off in terms of how much they're targeting next year, especially downfield. Um, on targets 10 or, more yard, 10 or more yards downfield, when he was in coverage, he allowed a 36% completion rate. That ranked 14th out of 70 qualified cornerbacks and 6.1 yards per coverage snap, ranking eighth out of 70. So he was limiting receptions, but also limiting big plays. He wasn't like getting burned, uh, you know, right. for like 50 yard touchdowns and whatnot um, with any type of consistency. So he was limiting big plays to his side of the field. And that's just such, if you can establish yourself as that type of quarterback, if you've got one guy on one side of the field that teams are hesitant to challenge downfield like that, that's huge for, as far as, um, changing the way offenses are going to approach your defense. And so I feel like Sertan is going to be that guy for Denver for the foreseeable future. He's going to really lock down. Um, taking a rookie uh, or a guy with only one year of experience, um, obviously there's some risk because there is uh, there's volatility with quarterbacks from year to year. So we can't necessarily say with a high degree of confidence that um, you know the what he showed as a rookie is going to continue. But it matched really well what we expected from him based on his career at Alabama. I mean, from the time he set foot on the field, he looked like a future top 10 pick. He carried it through his career at Alabama. He carried it on to his rookie year. I feel as good about um, him staying on that trajectory as any of the young cornerbacks uh, that are going to, that we're going to mention today. Yeah, I, I think that's it, true. And I, th- that's one of the other things kind of like a tight end and we're seeing it a little more at corner now where that was again a, a position where you step in year one and you're playing a lot you're, you're not always guaranteed to uh to be producing um as soon as you step on the field in your rookie season and it's, it's still pretty rare for rookies to step in and be you know, pretty good especially i think you look at like what what happened um you know, in 2020 with some of those rookies uh, that were highly drafted. Uh, they they did not pan out. But it, this, like, entire rookie class uh, really, like, was a pretty good – I so I'll, I'll mention this because I don't think either one of us are going to draft him because of, um, you know, how little he played and the injury. But, like, J.C. Horn started the year, like, better than – any of these guys that we probably like are going to talk about, but then there was the injury. So he missed a part of the year. So I, I don't expect it, expect him, especially since we're only drafting two corners for him to like, so he was, he was good. Uh, Sertan was good. Well, I think we, we might talk about, uh, you know, an, another guy um, coming up, but Sertan. So I put together um, adjusted yards allowed per coverage snap, which just kind of uses the pro football reference formula, like for quarterbacks uh, that, uses uh touchdowns and interceptions like in in yards um and Sertan was uh 34th uh last year in adjusted yards allowed per coverage snap and that was among 93 uh corners with at least um at least where where am I here 300 coverage snaps uh I got that's awesome for a rookie (laughs) that is great for a rookie so yeah so um and again, yeah, when you when you look at you know some of some of the other rookies that we saw like in in 2020, most of those guys were you know like in the in the 90s um, or, or in the in the 80s. But uh, this class was was still pretty good. Um, so uh, yeah, among the highly drafted guys, uh, Sertan was up there. So to, you know, be be a top you know 30 32 cornerback, um, and especially like playing on the outside as much as he did because you know some of those you know yards per coverage snaps. Um, you know, skews toward uh, slot guys uh, a little bit just For because sure. they, they don't get thrown at, uh, you know, quite as often the yards aren't, uh, yards don't get picked up quite as much there. Um, but yeah, Sertan, really good, uh, was high on my list. Um, so I think, again, you're going to force me to go with a position that you just took because I don't want <laughs> you to come with two guys. Um, and I'm going to go with the guy who actually, again, it was like a, a 1A, 1B um situation but uh aj terrell um again i assumed you were going there (laughs) yeah i figured that so like 
throughout the season talked a lot about AJ Terrell um, because I think he just had like I, it's picking up now. I think like as a NFL commentary, we've uh, accepted that AJ Terrell is <laughs> is very good. Again, he didn't get voted yeah. to the Pro Bowl, uh, which I think you know does Crazy. show some of the the flaws in, in Pro Bowl voting. I think it was second team All Pro um, you know, officially. I know when I did my All Pro team. Um, I had him uh, first team right behind uh, Jalen Ramsey because, you know, man, he was just really good. And I think like some of the things you could say, so I have him uh, third in adjusted yards allowed uh, per coverage snap. Um, And again, he was just like one of those guys who I think you can say like, oh, they, they only played sides um, in Atlanta for, for most of the time, but the teams didn't throw to Terrell's side, um, which it, it, it that matters. Like that is a skill. Uh, deterring targets when you're a cornerback is a good thing. Um, and if he wasn't holding up well, they wouldn't have avoided him the way they did. So, um, and, and again, went like when he was thrown at, also uh, did really well. So um, he, he's a guy that uh, has really you know improved. Had uh, you know a great season in 2021. I think that's something that you know can continue uh, for for 2022. Uh, and he's just uh, yeah, like I think still just one of the most underrated uh, corners uh, in the league. Um, and I think just has has really been playing well. Um, so yeah, uh, the pretty obvious pick if if you have. Uh, heard me talk about AJ Terrell uh, at any point. Um, so I like when you went corner, I was a little worried you were going to go there, but yeah. since you didn't, I'm, I'm going to grab him now that I can. I, I went back and forth. I created like a little draft board for myself. And I think I shifted him around a couple times. My, I guess why I went with Sertan over Terrell is that we've really only seen one year of Terrell play at that high of a level. And, you know, we do know that this is a position where there's a little bit of volatility. And Terrell, although he was a first-round pick, he was a very controversial first-round pick. Um, that was seen as a reach when the Falcons took him. And so I, I did not view him as the type of prospect as Sertan. He didn't play at, like, a all-pro type of level his first two years in the league. And so I, I, he was number two on my list. So, like, I'm not <laughs> certainly not saying he was – like we shouldn't be talking about him. He deserves, like he had a fantastic year. I'm just sort of like reserving a little bit of skepticism about like, is that repeatable or does he drop down to like, you know, 85% of what we saw last year? Like, which would still be good, but like not the you know, like all pro type of quarterback that he was last year. So I, that's that's probably why I went shifted towards Sertan as maybe, maybe being a guy who follows the draft as closely as I do, putting a little sure, yeah, that's, that's in fair. analysis, but that's going to, that's, going to be my bias when guys are close is I'm going to lean towards uh you know what I view them as as a prospect when we're talking about players this young obviously right yeah I, I think that's fair and I, like you said with corner it's it's one of those like it's it's extremely volatile and unless like yeah. unless you're Jalen Ramsey um being like really really good uh for multiple years in a row is is very hard